Hey, so we all know that low quality audio will ruin your videos. So today I wanna to talk about how to make your audio kick Ashton Obadiah here. And I wanna share with you in my experience of making videos, how I've actually taken the quality of my videos by just improving sound design. First step, we'll be talking about how to get good, clear and crisp talking audio. So a frame like this, you want really good sounding talking audio. Let me show you how to get that. Second up, I'm gonna show you how to use and implement sound effects into your B-roll or cinematic sequences so that you can improve the engagement quality that a viewer gets while watching your video. And lastly, we're gonna be talking about ambient noise. Ambient noise is one of those things that will help the viewer feel engaged and almost like they're in the scene with your characters. So without further ado, grab a coffee and let's get into it. Did I brand that? I didn't mean to brand it. So first up, we're talking about how to get good, crisp, talking head audio. And the first thing is honestly to just get your microphone as close as possible to the source. So a lot of people will use a lapel mic, the clip on a shirt, or you could even gaff tape it onto uh, the skin underneath if you want it to be secret and hidden away. Um, that's not usually the best option. If you're gonna do a lapel, I would generally recommend that you actually have that be like a secondary audio, just in case something else happens. It can kind of be a backup resource for you. Not that lapel mics aren't great, they're just not typically better. So what I usually like to do is out of frame here, there's just a microphone. I mean, it's literally like I'm touching it now. It's so, so, so close. Uh, I can touch my mouth with my thumb and my pinky to the microphone, it's that close. And you can do that with shotgun mics that you would normally mount on top of your camera, or you could do that with boom mics that are specifically designed to do something like this. There's a wide, wide range of microphones you can use for this. And honestly, even if you have a like an SM58, which is like a really, really classic, super standard musician's mic, that'll work super great as long as you have a decent audio recorder. So speaking of audio recorders, that is something that is extremely important. I wouldn't go for the cheapest options, but you don't have to break the bank to get a really good one. What you're listening to right now is the preamps in the H4N Pro, which don't get confused with the H4N. The H4N Pro actually has the same preamps as the H5N and the H6N. So you wanna definitely try to spend just a little bit more money and get those quality preamps. I also have this Tascam DR40, which is pretty helpful. It's a little lighter weight, a little cheaper build, but it's also less expensive and it'll do the trick as well. You wanna reference your audio at some point, whether it has to be before so that you don't have headphones on in the video, or if you're the person behind the camera, reference your audio the whole time you record. There's two things I would recommend. There's these really great Sony headphones. They're like 90 bucks, they're the big dome phones and they have cables and adapters that come with them. I'll link that in the description. It's an Amazon affiliate link, so if you buy that, I might get a kickback. Probably not, because no one ever buys that stuff, but you can still check it out down there. The other thing I would recommend, especially if you're a musician or if you just really enjoy having some slim profile headphones to listen to music and isolate everything outside, is the Shure SE 215s. They're single driver, like in-ear monitors for musicians. And so let's say there's a refrigerator in the next room that's buzzing pretty loud, or maybe there's kids playing outside of your house and they're pretty noisy. You'll be able to tell if that's being picked up by your microphone if you have those sound isolating headphones. And either set will do the trick. So the number one tip that I wanna give here when we're talking about utilizing sound effects is to let the visuals be the main driving force and let the audio help tell the story. I've seen a lot of times people will make a sequence or they'll do something and they're thinking about the sound effect, like they're they're painting their camera and then they think about the whoo that happens when they pan into their next frame. Unfortunately, that's just not that interesting because the whoosh isn't the point. The point was that you went from one frame to the next. So what was happening in the frames was more important than the fact that there was a silly little whoosh between it. So sometimes sound effects uh, can be a little distracting and you wanna completely avoid that. I would say that SFX are one of those things that you wanna to utilize to tell your story. And 
there's different kind of opinions on this. It really is just up to you, but I like to have my sound effects to be really subtle and layered. So if you're really listening, you'll notice some of those things. One of the worst things you can do is actually have your sound effects too loud in the mix. So they're way over the music or if they're silence, they're just weirdly loud in general. And that can kind of just make the viewer realize that they're watching a video rather than thinking about the story. And that's the last thing you want to do. The sound effects should just improve the story. So sometimes the transition sounds actually are amazing. And when you're thinking about that cinematic kind of style of stuff, you really want to work that in, especially if you're really into doing transitions. It kind of just depends on the project if transitions are worth putting a lot of energy into or not. But if you are gonna put energy into the video transition, helping that out with sound effects is only gonna help your video. The last part of the process that I wanna talk about of implementing sound effects into your video is actually capturing sound effects with your field recorders. And so think about, you know, if someone's popping a skateboard, you wanna get in there and record a few skateboard pops. Or if you're like, let's just stick with the skateboard theme for this montage here. When you're cruising, you need that sound of the wheels spinning and kicking up gravel and all that kind of stuff. And so ride your skateboard around, hold that audio recorder right underneath. Whatever you do, you wanna kind of think about that as you're filming. But if there is something that's like, man, that's a cool sound, make sure you capture that. Now this leads us into the last thing we're talking about today, which is ambient noise. <laughs> Hey, so for this last bit, I wanted to take you into a coffee shop to show you a little bit about the difference between ambient noise and room tone. So for instance, room tone is one of those things that every room has, and you want to capture 30 seconds to 45 seconds of this so that you can use it to fill in those gaps whenever somebody sneezes or coughs. It's really, really helpful in editing. So ambient noise is one of those things that helps you to embrace your environment. Because a lot of times when you're capturing your audio, you can't control So ambient noise is one of those things that you use to embrace your environment. And it can be a really great way to create a sort of a soundscape underneath the talking audio that you have. You wanna make sure that you're getting good, clean audio while you're recording. But also you can layer in some nice ambient sound later to create a better soundscape for your talking audio to live on. So for instance, I'm here at a coffee shop and you'll notice that if I add in a nice little dull roar of the people talking and stuff like that, it actually creates a nice warm environment, but I have it in a separate audio track so that I can control the level of it so that you can still clearly understand what I'm saying. Now this is one of those things that really helps your videos to sparkle and sets it apart. I have to say that one of my favorite things about ambient noise is that if you have a little bit of a dry or less exciting vocal recording and you want to kind of spice it up with some space, you can add those nice things like birds chirping outside or something like that. And it really does help quite a bit to get a nice soundscape for your video. One of my favorite things about that is that it becomes very immersive. So your viewer feels like they're in your video, they're experiencing it with you, and there's not these weird audio gaps to remind them that they're just staring at a screen, but rather you're giving them a full-on experience. So, okay, so those are my three audio tips for today, but I bet you've got some of your own, and I would love to hear them. So drop them down in the comments section so we can share as a community all the different things that we know about how to make our videos great. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do, and subscribe for more tips on how to grow and create and content creation. I'll see you next week.